This is Mission Control Houston. The crew of Expedition 36 on board the International Space Station has had an extremely busy week on board the orbiting complex. Monday started off uh, in proper order with a Russian spacewalk that uh, was conducted by Fyodor Yurchikin and Alexander Mazurkin. They finished this six hour, 34 minute spacewalk and uh, took care of pretty much everything that was on the list of items that they needed to address. The majority of the activities were to get ready for the new Russian multi-purpose laboratory module that will replace the Piers docking compartment several months from now. Of course, Piers is one of the older parts of the International Space Station, but this new MLM will offer some more room, uh, better access to experiments, and also an airlock and a docking port for upcoming uh, visiting vehicles. This crew installed some cable clamps to get ready for that, some handrails, and tested some rendezvous equipment. They also swapped out a, a flow control valve that is part of the Zarya module's coolant system and also retrieved an experiment outside during that spacewalk. This was the 169th spacewalk in support of space station assembly and maintenance. We now have a total amount of 1,067 hours and 43 minutes. Speaking of spacewalks, Chris Cassidy, Luca Parmentano getting ready for their two spacewalks coming up on July 9th and July 16th. They have several different tasks that they're going to be accomplishing during that time, but they spent some time inside the Quest Airlock getting their suits ready. Also getting the tools ready to go, Karen Nyberg also helped them out. As we take a look forward to that spacewalk, we'll have a briefing here at the Johnson Space Center on July 2nd. That will air at 1 p.m. Central Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Time from here at the Johnson Space Center. Our coverage of both of those spacewalks will begin at 6 a.m. on both those days on July 9th and July 16th with those six and a half hour spacewalks getting kicked off around 7.10 a.m. Central Time on both of those mornings. Cargo operations also continued with the Albert Einstein automated transfer vehicle. Here you see Chris Cassidy moving some of the items uh, from the Russian segment into the U.S. segment. Uh, that ATV launched on June 5th. It docked on June 15th. It is back on the Russian segment of the ISS on the Zvezda service module. It brought up 7.3 tons of supplies, and the crew will be busy over the next several days unloading it, and then they'll start packing it full of trash and other items that are no longer needed on board the space station and then coming up in late October ATV will say farewell and it will be sent into a destructive re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. Dexter was also busy this week. Dexter is one of the robots outside the International Space Station built by the Canadian Space Agency. The uh, ground teams were testing Dexter there on the end of the station's robotic arm. Dexter is a fairly large robot. It's each of its arms, there's two of them, are about 11 feet across. Dexter is about 12 feet tall but they were using uh, different maneuvers to check out Dexter to see if it can open up some of the bay doors on the outside of the station and also turn some screws. All this uh, testing is part of the checkout activities of Dexter to make sure that uh, it's ready to go for future operations. Meanwhile, Robonaut inside the station continued this uh, week of robotic activities as it was being checked out as well. You see it rotating around there. It was operating its task board this week as it uh, threw some switches and also moved some things around. Luca Parmentano there in the screen, he was watching over as the ground commands were sent to move Robonaut around. He also handed off uh, an airflow monitor this morning uh, to Robonaut to uh, check it out to make sure that Robonaut could operate that piece of equipment inside the station. Parmentano also worked with Nyberg this week on the ocular health study. This is the thing you've heard us talk about several times here on NASA TV. Uh, one of the uh, more recent discoveries was that the astronauts' eyes tend to change the longer they're up in space. So this ocular health study in something called a fundoscope uh, is being used to take ultrasound images of the eyes to uh, monitor the pressure inside and the changes that happen and to correlate that to the astronauts' physiology uh, to help predict and determine what could co possibly cause uh, those effects. Parmentano also worked with Chris Cassidy this week on the spinal ultrasound. This is another uh, experiment on board to take a look at how the spine is affected uh, with the astronauts and cosmonauts. They tend to get a little bit taller in space, which of course is something that uh, sounds good to most of us, but uh, can actually actually cause some discomfort uh, for the crew. So the spinal ultrasound is designed to take a look at those effects, what causes it, and uh, again, what uh, are some of the effects of that as the crew uh, stays up in space uh, for extended periods of time. Of course, for all the latest, just log on to the NASA website. Go to www.nasa.gov station to learn all about the Expedition 36 crew and what they're up to each week.